People see me as a man in a big ministry because they always see me in the big platform. But recently, God asked me a question. He said, my son, what are you up to? What are you up to? What is the picture that you have in your mind? And I said, Lord, I don't have any picture. I don't have any picture. I don't have my picture of being on the platform. I don't have a picture of me being in the big ministry, standing in front of a big crowd. Lord, I don't have any picture. All I want is my heart to please your heart. And many times I, people ask me, what do you pray? What do you pray? Even this morning I was praying. I woke up at 3 a.m. and I was praying. The most word I spoke when I was praying, Jesus, I love you. Jesus, I love you with all my heart, with all my effort. This is all I can say. Please trap me into the first love. This is where I belong. I'm not called for deliverance. I'm not called for healing or ministry. I'm called to love you, Lord. This is my first calling. That is why I always represent myself as a bride, not a pastor, not an apostle, not a prophet, nothing, not an evangelist. I'm just a young bride of Jesus Christ who loves Jesus with all my heart, with all my effort. Bride, loving the bridegroom with all the heart and the effort. And God is looking, Jesus is looking for the pure brides. He's looking for the pure brides. This bridegroom is a bridegroom, but at the same time, he's very glorious king. Look at my eyes right now. Look at my eyes. When you are looking at my eyes right now at this moment, this glorious king is sitting on the throne at this moment. The one who sits on the throne, the one who sits on the throne is not a fairy tale. The one who sits on the throne is not a theory. The one who sits on the throne is so real. He's, he's so real, glorious king. Who is sitting on the throne at this right moment. You are listening to my voice and looking at my eyes right now. And the worship is going 24 hours, 365 days. Holy, holy, holy is the Lord God Almighty. Who was and is and is to come. To the one who sits on the throne. To the Lamb. Be the glory. Be the honor. Be the wisdom. Be the power. Be the praise. This worship, the unending song is going 24 hours, 365 days. Right this moment, you are looking at me right now. He's a glorious king. And this king has called you to be the pure bride. In the real, you're in the relationship with the king. The relationship with the king is not a relationship of negotiation. When the king calls you to become the pure bride, you cannot go and negotiate with the king. There is no negotiation. When the king says yes, it is yes. When the king says no, it is no. When the king says A, it is A. When the king says B, it is B. When the king says A, you cannot go to the king and say, Sir, can you please help me to become C? No. The relationship with the king is not a relationship with negotiation. And this king has called you to become the pure bride. What is pure bride? Pure bride is giving the full, whole life. Your emotion, your thought, your imagination, your desire, your strategy, your plan. Everything to the bridegroom. The bridegroom and bride is a serious relationship that the body has to become one. But nowadays there are so many Christians with so many bridegrooms. So many bridegrooms. Something that you love equally to Jesus or something that you love more than Jesus Christ is your another bridegroom. 
If you have more than one bridegroom, it's adultery. Adultery is idolatry. Idolatry is adultery. It is a serious relationship than you think of it. It's so much more serious. It's the relationship of the king and the servant, of the bridegroom and the bride. You don't joke with that. You don't joke with your wife. You don't joke with your husband. It's a serious relationship. The bridegroom is calling you to be the bride, to give everything to the bridegroom. But so many bridegrooms you have. Sometimes a ministry can be your another bridegroom. You love ministry more than Jesus. It's so possible. This message is not for non-Christians. This message is for non-Christians and also Christians. There are so many Christians, but not all of them are the pure bride. It can be your addiction, another bridegroom, hatred, unforgiveness, love of money, love of fame, love of ministry, unclean relationship, anything contrary to Jesus Christ, anything that you love more than Jesus, anything that you love equally to Jesus. But you know what? He's so worthy. He deserves it. He's so worthy for you to give all your heart, all your imagination, all your thought, all your willingness, all your flesh, everything about you to Jesus Christ. He's so worthy to receive all your, all your life. He deserves it. He's worthy. Because He's the glorious King. Let me tell you how much He's so glorious. Jesus Christ, He existed since before the creation. He was there during the creation of human. He was there during the creation of man. He existed since before the creation, man, creation of man. But He makes the decision to come to this earth, becoming a fully man and fully God at the same time. Someone who existed since before the creation of man, but coming as a fully man and fully God at the same time. Someone who existed during the creation of man, during the creation of human, decides to be inside the womb of a human. Glorious. And when in at the time of his birth, the whole universe was moving together. The whole universe was moving and working together for the birth of Jesus Christ. A star rose. When Jesus was born, a star rose. The whole galaxy, the whole universe was moving together. Working together for the birth of Jesus Christ. Glorious Jesus. The birth of the king, a star rose, the Magi saw the star. It didn't just rise, it was moving. It was moving, guiding to the place of the birth of the king. The whole universe was moving and working together for the king. Glorious king, glorious king. He is fully God and fully man at the same time. Lion and the lamb at the same time. Powerful like lion, but lamb is humble. Lamb just follows the order of the shepherd, has no opinion. Powerful at the same time, humble at the same time. He changed the water into wine. He walked on the water. That wasn't enough. He made his disciple to also walk on the water. Very powerful. And he commands the wind, the wind obeys. He commands the water, the water obeys. He commands the storm, the climate obeys. He rebuked the climate. And the wave stopped, the rain stopped, the storm stopped, the wind stopped. He said, quiet to the climate. Just that, quiet, it obeyed. 
So powerful. Very powerful. Powerful lion, but humble at the same time. Very, very humble. He eats food with the sinners. He was born in a dirty place. And he was baptized by men. By men. He existed since before the creation of men. But he was baptized by men. John the Baptist. When, when Jesus came to the John the Baptist to receive baptism, John said, I cannot do this, sir. I'm the one to be baptized by you. But Jesus said, let it be done for the righteousness. Jesus, so humble. He had nothing about himself. He had nothing about his willingness. He had nothing about his desire. He had nothing about his, 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 his dream. He had nothing about himself. He was fully self-denied. Filled with the righteousness of the Father. Full, filled with the righteousness of the Father and the willingness of the Father. He had nothing about himself. So humble. Powerful lion, but at the same time so humble lamb. Powerful God, but at the same time, fully man. Jesus fasted 40 days and night. God fasting 40 days and night. Glorious. And it's written in the Bible. He was hungry after 40 days and night of fasting. At that moment, Satan came to tempt him. Come on, Jesus, turn this stone into bread. And Jesus said, it is written, man shall not live by bread alone, but by the word of God from the mouth of God. And Satan tempts again, try jump, for it is written, the angels will carry you and you'll not strike your feet against a stone. And Jesus said, it is written, don't test God. And Satan tempts again, bow to me, I'll give you everything you see now. Go away from me, Satan. It is written, you shall worship only the Lord God. Jesus, being fully God and fully man at the same time, he showed the best example of how a man can overcome the temptation by the word of God. By the word of God, it is written, saying it is written, it is written. He was fully God and fully man at the same time. And he felt emotion because he was fully man. He felt compassion. He cried. He felt anger. And there were two times he felt amazed. Amazed. In the book of Mark chapter 6 verse 6 says he was amazed. Why? He went to his hometown and he saw the people with no faith. And it is written in the Bible, he could not perform many miracles, but he just healed some. And in the book of Mark chapter 6 verse 6 says, he was amazed to see the people of lack of faith. He was fully man and fully God at the same time. There was another time he was amazed when a centurion came to him. Sir, my servant is sick on the bed. And Jesus said, shall I go and heal him? And the centurion said, sir, I don't deserve you under my roof. If you just speak a word in this place, my servant will be healed. And it's written in the Bible, Jesus was amazed. And Jesus said to the crowd, I have never seen such kind of faith in whole Israel. He was amazed when he saw no faith. And on the other hand, he was amazed when he saw great faith. He was fully God and fully man at the same time. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. He felt hunger. He felt amazement. He felt compassion. Fully God and fully man at the same time. Every moment he was walking on this earth, he was not comfortable. Never comfortable. He didn't come here to become comfortable. He didn't come here to be served. He came to serve you. He didn't come to receive something from you. He came to give you everything. He didn't come here to give you something. He came here to give you everything. 
But nowadays, there are so many Christians giving something to Jesus. Something to Jesus. Some part to Jesus. But he who sits on the throne right this moment, he came down being a fully man to give you everything. Every single minute. He came to give you every single minute of his life. You call yourself Christian. Christian. What is Christian? I'm Korean. What is Korean? People of Korea. I speak Korean. I have a culture of Korea. I speak like Korean. I eat like Korean. I have culture of Korea. I have a habit of Korean. I have this 24 hours, 365 days because I'm Korean always. I cannot be Mexican suddenly. I go to my family, I'm Korean. I go to school, I become a Mexican. I go to church, I become Colombian. I go, I go to the street, I become American. It's impossible. My passport is South Korean. I have the identity of Korean. Then what is Christian? Christian, people of Christ. Then what do you mean? Being a people of Christ 24 hours, 365 days, no excuse. That is Christian, people of Christ. And this Christ gave you everything first. He's not asking you when he, not give, he didn't give you anything. He gave you everything. Do you know why? Because he loves you. He sacrificed himself. Sacrifice is the maximum expression of love. God so loved the world that he gave his only son. John 3.16 that was the expression of His love. The maximum expression of love. He gave you everything. Every single minute. The life on earth was never comfortable for Him. He had no time to rest. That's why He fell, on a, fell asleep on the boat when there was a storm. He was sleeping peacefully. Imagine how tired He was. Never comfortable. Leaving every single moment for you to give you the best, to give you everything. But so many Christians today, they give something, something. Hallelujah. Jesus, He deserves everything. He's glorious, He's worthy. He's the glorious King who sits on the throne right now with the eyes of blazing fire. With His face shining like sun. With His voice like rushing water. And in the throne right now, the angels, the 24 elders and the four living creatures are worshiping day and night. And it is happening right this moment. And it will continue to happen in the next minute also. He's glorious. He deserves it. And this Jesus Christ, who was fully man and fully God at the same time, when He was about to be crucified, His heart was troubled. He was feeling sorrow. He went to Gethsemane. He went his, with, with his disciples and he told the disciples, stay here. I'm going to go there and pray. And he took Peter and other two disciples, total three disciples only to walk with him to the prayer point. He was walking with him. I mean, he was walking with other three disciples. The rest of them were waiting for Jesus. The three were walking with Jesus. And it is written in the Bible while he's walking to the prayer point. He started feeling sorrowful. His heart started to be troubled while he was walking. And while he was walking, he spoke to the three disciples. My heart is overwhelmed with sorrow to the point of death. Jesus said this, which means that he's feeling sorrowful, that he's, feel like he's feeling like he's dying. That sorrowful. He was fully God and fully man at the same time. He was walking with his heart troubled, with the sorrowful, 
feeling sorrow to the point of death. And while he was walking, he just fell on the floor. It's written, he put his head on the floor and started crying. Father, if it is possible, take this cup away from me. But do it according to your will, not my will. Fully God and fully man at the same time. He was feeling painful. It was so difficult. It was so painful. But he had nothing about himself. He had nothing about his willingness. All, all about himself. He had nothing about himself. He was just filled and full with the will of the Father. The righteousness of the Father. So he was saying, if it is possible, take away this cup from me. But do it according to your will, not my will. He was fully lamb. Just following the shepherd. Nothing about him. No willingness of himself. No desire of himself. No, no dream of himself. Nothing. Nothing about his emotion. Only about the will of the Father. And he was brought in front of the high priest. High priest. He calls himself the one serving God. He calls himself the man of God of the generation. High priest. But when the true living God stands in front of him, he says, I charge you under the oath by the living God. How can you say that? To the true living God standing in front of him. How rude is that to say that? And the high priest asks a question. Are you the Messiah? And Jesus said, you have said so. The high priest was so mad. He stood up from the chair. He teared his garment saying, You have spoken blasphemy. How rude is that? How does he dare to speak that in the face of God? And when the high priest spoke, spoke that, the crowd came to him. The crowd came to Jesus and spit saliva on the face of Jesus and started punching him on the face with, his, with their fists and started slapping him. And that wasn't enough. They started mocking him. Ah, you said you are a prophet. You are a messiah. Come on, prophesy. They'll punch his face again. And, Come on, prophesy. Who is the one just punched your face? Prophesy. You say you are a prophet. You are a messiah. Aha, you cannot do anything. They'll slap their face, his face again saying, Who is the one who just slapped your face? What is the name of a person who just slapped your face? Come on, prophesy. You are a prophet. Very rude. And Jesus was brought in front of Pilate, the governor. And governor asked the question, Are you the king of Jews? And Jesus replied, you have said so, yes. And people got even more mad. And they put a crown of thorns in the head of, on the head of Jesus Christ. And the thorns were poking the head of Jesus. And he was bleeding and bleeding. And they stripped the clothes of Jesus. He was naked. He was naked to cover you with mercy. He was naked to cover you with grace. He was naked to cover you with love. He was naked to cover you with life. He was naked. And they gave a staff on the right hand of Jesus Christ. So imagine right now, Jesus Christ having a crown of thorns. And on his right hand, there's a staff. They gave it to him intentionally. And now they said, ah! Jesus, now you look like a king of Jews. You have a crown, you have a staff, you're a king. Hail the king of Jews. After they said that, they took away the staff from his right hand again. And then they smashed the head of Jesus with the staff. It is written in the Bible, they smashed again and again. 
They were smashing again and again and again the head of Jesus. And this Jesus was on the cross. Was on the cross. He looked up to the heaven and said, Eli, 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 Lema Sabachthani. My God, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Fully God and fully man at the same time. And a little later, Jesus shouted with loud voice. And he gave up his spirit. And he died. And he died. Why did he die? Why? To free you. To free you. In the book of Hebrews chapter 2 verse 14 it says, By his death, the power of death was broken. So that you will no longer live as a slave to the fear of death. So he died. And when he died, Satan was in fear. Satan was scared when he died. Why? Jesus died, but suddenly Satan becoming scared. Satan was in fear. Why? Because Satan remembered that Jesus prophesied. Jesus prophesied that he will be back into life in three days. He prophesied that he will come back to life in three days after the death. And Satan knew this. So Satan was scared. Satan was in fear. And Satan was like, oh, what should I do now? He prophesied that he'll be back into life in three days. What should I do now? So he started using Pilate, high priest, and the Pharisees. He sent the high priest and the Pharisees to Pilate. And the high priest and the, and the, and the, and the Pharisees went to Pilate, the governor, and said, Sir, 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 that deceiver said, they described Jesus as a deceiver. That deceiver said, he'll be back into life in three days. And Pilates gave them all the soldiers and told them, bring the soldiers and seal the tomb. Protect the tomb in, a, in the best way as you know how. Make, put your best effort, all your effort. Protect and seal the tomb in the best way as you know how. Why? Satan was in fear. Satan was scared. So he was using Pilate, high priest, and, 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 and Pharisee to seal the tomb. Because Jesus Christ prophesied that he will be back into life in three days. And Satan knew that. So he was scared. But you know what? No matter how much Satan tries, no matter how much effort Satan puts, no matter how much effort, how hard Satan tries, nothing can stop Jesus from demonstrating the resurrection power. Nothing can stop Jesus from Jesus demonstrating that He is the true King, the King of Kings. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. There are many tombs. There are many graves. Whatever religion you call it, whatever the religious leaders you call it, their graves are still there. Their tombs are still there. But there's only one tomb empty. It is the tomb of Jesus Christ. It is the tomb of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Listen to this. No matter how hard the Satan tries in your life, no matter how much effort Satan puts in your life, nothing can stop the resurrection power of Jesus Christ to touch your life, to touch your family, to touch your generations, to touch your finance, to touch your ministry. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Jesus, His glorious King. His glorious King. This resurrection power is, was too powerful that it couldn't just stay inside the body of Jesus Christ. It was just too powerful. The body can contain the power of resurrection. Because it was too powerful, this resurrection power was extended 
outside the body of Jesus Christ. When Jesus resurrected, He was not resurrected alone. You know why? Because the power was too powerful. They couldn't just stay inside the body of Jesus Christ. He was extended outside the body of Jesus Christ. And this power touched the dead bodies of other holy people. Hallelujah. And when Jesus was resurrected, the other holy people who died long time ago, the grandfathers, the great grandfathers, they came back to life together with Jesus and these people were walking in the holy city into the Jerusalem and people were shocked oh my god that's the grandpa that's the great grandpa who died long time ago he's walking here why because the power of resurrection was too powerful that it couldn't just stay inside the body of Jesus Christ it was extended outside the body of Jesus Christ and this power is too powerful that it is extended to you today today to your family today to your health today to your generations today the tomb in your family be empty in the name of Jesus the tomb in your ministry be empty in the name of Jesus the tomb in your generations and generations be empty in the name of Jesus the tomb in your finance be empty in the name of Jesus the tomb in your health be empty in the name of Jesus the tomb in your children be empty in the name of Jesus Christ hallelujah 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 the glorious king the only one the king of kings who has demonstrated the resurrection power who has proved himself that he is the king nobody proved him he proved himself by the resurrection power that he is the true king the king of kings hallelujah this glorious king was resurrected mary magdalene and the other mary in the book of matthew chapter 28 verse 5 to 10 they ran to the town of jesus christ and they met resurrected jesus and they clasped the feet of jesus cried and worshiped him Imagine that, holding the feet of Jesus and worshiping Him on the floor. And Jesus appeared to His disciples several times. <clears throat> the room was locked, but Jesus appeared inside the room. So the disciples thought it was a ghost. But Jesus proved Himself to them that He had flesh. And he's the resurrected one. He even, he even, he even asked for, for something to eat because he wanted to prove himself that he had flesh. He's not a ghost. And, and one time he was, he was walking. There were two disciples walking. And Jesus appeared to them. And they didn't, they didn't believe that Jesus was resurrected. And when Jesus appeared, they didn't even realize that it was Jesus. So Jesus started explaining to them very kindly from, from Moses to all the prophets what they were saying about himself very kindly. And their eyes were opened when Jesus broke the bread for them. And Jesus appeared in front of disciples several more times. One day Peter went for fishing with other disciples. He was on a boat fishing. And Jesus suddenly appeared in the, in the shore. And the other disciple told the Peter, Peter, is our Lord standing in the shore? And you know, Peter loved Jesus so much. He just jumped out from the boat and swam to Jesus. Jesus, Jesus. He swam to the shore. And when he arrived, he saw Jesus was cooking breakfast for the disciples, fish and bread. And Jesus asked Peter, Peter, could you please bring some of the fish that you caught? And he went back to the boat and bring more fish. And Jesus cooked fish and bread and made this breakfast for his disciples. Very sweet, glorious. And you know, this Jesus Christ is so powerful, but at the same time so humble. You know, he calls his disciples brothers. He calls his disciples friends. When he appeared in front of the Mary Magdalene and the other Mary, Jesus said, go and tell my brothers. He was someone. He was someone 
who existed since before the creation. And he was someone who existed since before the creation of man. And he was someone who existed during the creation of man. And he saw the man being created. But he receives baptism from a man. And then he calls his man disciples, my brothers, my friends. Nowadays, even the pastors barely call their disciples my brothers. But Jesus was calling his disciples my brothers, my friend, my brother. <laughs> Do you love him? He's just awesome. The word cannot describe him. He's just so awesome. He's just so awesome. Jesus Christ. He's glorious, awesome King, glorious bridegroom. And he asked Peter, Peter, do you love me? Yes, Lord. Feed my lambs. Peter, do you love me? Yes, Lord. Why do you ask me one more time? Take care of my sheep. Peter, do you love me? Third time asking. Yes, Lord, you know that, Lord. Feed my sheep. And Jesus did many other more miracles. And he did so much more things. And it's written in the book of John that if you record all the things that Jesus has done, even the earth will not be, the world will not be able to, to contain all the books written. And in the Bible it says, he did even more. He performed more signs and wonders and miracles after the resurrection in front of the disciples. And he blessed his disciples and he went back to the heaven. And the disciples were watching him going up and they started worshiping. And he is sitting on the throne right now. Everybody look at my eyes. This is no joke. This time is no joke. Look at my eyes. Look at my eyes. While you are looking at my eyes right now, he is sitting on the throne at this right moment. It's not a fairy tale. It's so real. It's so real. He's sitting on the throne at this moment. His eyes are like blazing fire. His, uh, his face is like shining sun. His voice is like rushing water. <sighs> He's sitting on the throne. And there are four living creatures Worshipping day and night, holy, holy, holy is the Lord God Almighty who was and is and is to come. And there are 24 other thrones and the 24 elders are sitting around on the 24 other thrones with gold crown and white clothes. And the, when the four living creatures are worshipping, these 24 elders join the worship. The 24 elders come down from the throne, put their crown down the floor. And their body on the floor and worship together join the four living creatures worshiping holy 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 is the lord god almighty who was and is and is to come to the one who sits on the throne to the lamb be the glory be the wisdom be the power be the praise be the honor this is happening right now 24 hours this worship is happening the throne right now when you're under the influence of my voice, even you people in the second century, when you're under the influence of my voice, this worship on the throne is happening right now. It's not a fairy tale. It's so real. It's real. It's real right now at this moment. And this glorious King is looking for the pure brides on the last day. On the last day, he will look for the pure brides. On the last day, he will not look for people, oh, how many demons you cast out, how many signs and wonders you performed, how many followers you have, how many businesses you have, how much you have in your bank account. Is your father a man of faith? Your father cannot save you. Is your mother a man of a woman of faith? Your mother cannot save you. Is your individual, personal relationship with Jesus Christ, the relationship of bridegroom and the bride, 
on the last day, he will look for the pure bride. The pure bride. No excuse. No opinion. He will not ask you how much minis your ministry was big or not. Do you have a ministry? Do you have a big ministry? Do you have a small ministry? Are you a worship leader? Did you sing every week? How many albums did you produce? No. Are you the pure bride of the bridegroom who sits on the throne, the glorious King Jesus Christ? You didn't come here to make, make friends in the church. You didn't come here to talk with your friends, receive contacts or nothing. Right now, you came to this service to respond individually, personally, to the one who sits on the throne right this moment. You came to encounter Jesus Christ. Don't mind about people sitting beside you, behind you, front of you. They are not interested in you, what you will be speaking, what you will be doing, whether you will stand up or kneel down. No. The only person who is interested in you right this moment is the one who sits on the throne. And this Jesus Christ, the glorious King, is calling you right now. My daughter, would you be my pure bride? My son, would you be my pure bride? If you want to respond to this calling, don't mind the people around you, beside you, in front of you. They are not going to help you. They are not interested in you. Jesus is interested in you. Your response right now, only Him. If you want to respond to this calling, I want you to rise up on your feet. My son, would you be my pure bride? My daughter, would you be my pure bride? Would you be my pure bride? Hallelujah. He's worthy. He's worthy to receive all your life, your effort, your emotion, everything. But there are so many bridegrooms you have. So many bridegrooms. Hatred, addiction, alcohol, pornography, masturbation, love of money, love of fame, love of ministry. Addiction, hatred, unforgiveness, unclean relationship, so many things, so many bridegrooms. It's adultery, that is idolatry. You know, our Lord Jesus who sits on the throne doesn't deserve that. He does not deserve that. He does not deserve that. He does not deserve the adultery. He's a pure bridegroom and the pure bridegroom is calling you to be the pure bride. He deserves it. He's worthy. Do you know in the book of Revelation says, Who is worthy? Who is worthy to break the seal and open the scroll? Who is worthy? And it says, worthy is the lamb. Worthy is the lamb. Why does not it say worthy is the lion? Because he did not win the battle by fighting as a lion. He won the battle by being slain. He won the battle. He got the victory by being slain as the lamb, by being crucified as the lamb. That's why it says, worthy is the lamb. He does not say, worthy is the lion. Worthy is the lamb, worthy is the lamb. He gave you everything. He was slain. He was crucified. He gave you everything. And now this pure bridegroom is looking for the pure bride who can give everything to the pure bridegroom. Hallelujah. Glorious. Now repeat after me. Say Jesus. Jesus. I am here. I am here. Your pure bride is here. Your pure bride is here. 
Forgive me. Forgive me. I abandon all other bridegrooms. I abandon all other bridegrooms. I renounce all other bridegrooms. I renounce all other bridegrooms. I want you to renounce that only you know that is in your heart. All the addiction. Don't mind about people beside you. They are not interested in your confession. Jesus is the only one who is interested in your confession at the right this moment. The one who sits on the throne. Don't mind about Him. Open your lips and confess everything and abandon all other bridegrooms other than Jesus Christ. Something that you love equally to Jesus. Something that you love more than Jesus Christ. Renounce Him right now. Abandon those other bridegrooms. Is it your unforgiveness? Is it your hatred? Is it your unclean relationship? Is it pornography? Is it masturbation? Is it alcohol? Is it cigarette? Is it love of money? Love of ministry? Love of fame? Love of success? He deserves everything. He's worthy to receive your life. To give your life to Him fully, 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 fully. Not something, everything. Not a part, everything. Thanks for watching to this sermon. If this was a blessing to you, would you let me know in the comments below what stood out to you from this message? What are you taking home with you from this message? Also, if you enjoyed these messages, would you help us and hit thumbs up to this video and subscribe to our channel so you can get new videos every single week delivered to you on your YouTube app. If you go to hungrygen.com forward slash sermons, you'll actually be able to download the transcript, the notes, and the quotes of this sermon and the rest of all of our sermons free of charge. Until next time.